Okay, just a quick intro here. This is using the um, very plain, ordinary, non-coded cardstock for another scene, but I want to start moving into um, some of the more surface-oriented media. Um, colored pencils, charcoals, I don't know, pastels maybe or something like that, Conte crayons, who knows. But one of the things that are, you know, more catered to the, um, you know, the paper crafting stamping industry are inks, right? So in this case, instead of going with um, dye-based inks or, say, alcohol inks to color my imagery, I colored uh, the background of this scene using my hybrid inks. Hybrid inks are a combination of dye and oil-based pigment inks mixed together and uh, you get the hybrid ink out of them, but those inks sit on the surface more than your absorbent staining dye-based inks or very absorbent alcohol inks, okay? So I was able to achieve a much deeper, richer looking end result because this media is stain on the surface of the, you know, this very absorbent paper more than um, those other types of media. So. Um, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty pleased with the result here. Now, if I have some coated paper and I have a choice between using, you know, your plain staples, you know, non-coated paper or a coated dull or glossy or whatever, maybe not the glossy, but a coated dull or satin style of paper, you know, clay coated, I'm going to go with the clay coated one because I'm going to get kind of a much stronger um, end result in terms of the saturation and value of the inks because it's going to be less absorbent than this one. But I think this looks, you know, pretty good uh, in terms of, um, you know, what we have to start off with. And I didn't have to struggle with the media at all. It went on real similar, you know, to the, um, to the coated doll paper that I've been you know, really enjoying using with the, um, the hybrid inks here. So, um, the end result's a little bit more, you know, in terms of this piece of paper right here. I mean, if we mount this onto a card, it'll be fine or whatever, you know, we can kind of flatten it out too, maybe. <laughs> I'd probably put it in a book. This is a fairly thick matte paper, but just, you know, that sheer amount of, um, of um, media on top of an uncoated paper. This paper is kind of buckling a little bit, you know, but hey, you know, that's not too bad, I think, for the amount of ink that I've used on here for being such a plain, you know, kind of ordinary, easy accessible uh, paper to use. So uh, hybrid inks, if you have some uh, pigment inks, you can do the same type of thing. Um, bleed proof white which is what I used on here just to kind of expand on the textural um, surface quality of the piece. And then I used the Meowzen uh, white paint pen for um, some highlights on my rocks and to do that little uh, eight-pointed star up in the sky. And that was it, okay? So you can use like a gel pen or something like that if you don't have a you know white paint pen these white paint pens are extremely inexpensive on, uh, like, Amazon. They, they're so inexpensive that you have to buy them, like, packs of, like, five or ten, you know, because it's, like, a ten-pack is, like, five bucks or something like that. It's, I don't know. It's so cheap. But anyways, um, kind of fun stuff, and I'm really happy with the end result of this one. Um, you know, I don't find it to be, you know, anemic or anything like that. I think that handled uh, the media just fine. So it comes to show you what we can do with some media, and I haven't even, you know, I've just begun to experiment on this um, plain staples paper here. It's not going to be my favorite paper of all time, but um, I'm kind of eager to see what we can do with it. In some more exploration, you know, maybe we'll use some reinker fluids or something like that to give a um, kind of a stronger um, application of dye-based inks on it and utilize that um, absorbent um, characteristic of a non-coated paper, um, you know, to our advantage, if we can. Um, anyways, if you choose to watch the video, I hope you enjoy it, and thanks as always for tuning into the channel. Okay, we're going to do another experiment here with our very plain, uncoated uh, cardstock here from Staples. I'd imagine it's just any type of plain paper you find 
thick enough to kind of hold up to uh, the amount of media we're putting on here. I don't think I would try this with like copier paper or something like that. You know, your standard thin, you know, copy paper or something like that. You could, but it'll probably just do a lot of curling. So, but this, in terms of the quality of the paper, I, like I've said before on uh, the previous um, couple videos, I kind of liken this paper to just, you know, kind of a thicker version of copy paper. Okay, now what I've been experimenting around with um, so far is just the use of this paper with dye based inks, and then I use some alcohol inks on the second test. Those two types of media are, you know, they absorb into the, the surface of the paper, okay? And, um, you know, with that being said, our impressions and our, well, not really so much the impressions, but our, our surface quality in terms of the end results, they're going to be lacking in a couple things in comparison to a coated glossy or a coated matte paper. They're going to, they're going to suffer in terms of intensity and value, uh, the value range specifically, okay? We're not going to have like extreme lights all the way to extreme darks, okay? Even when you stamp out something or color something with a black dye-based ink, it still looks, you know, like some version of gray, you know, maybe a 90% or something of that sort. And the intensity, because of that absorbency factor, kind of zaps a lot of the, uh, the brighter um, range of whatever given um, colors you're working with, be it dye-based inks or alcohol inks or whatnot. Okay, so that being said, um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try some more surface-oriented media. Okay, so we're going to try out these hybrid inks, which are a combination of dye and pigment inks, okay, and they're oil-based. So, um, they would just be, they're going to absorb somewhat, but the, those pigment inks are a lot more surface oriented. They stay on the surface longer. Now, I don't know how to do this. You know, I'm thinking about, I was thinking about stamping out my imagery in dye-based ink and then going over it with the hybrid inks to color, but I think what I'm going to do here is I think I'm going to apply some swatched backgrounds using the uh, the hybrid inks first. And then I'll try stamping over the top of it with um, another oil-based ink in the Versifying Black. Now in the past, if I've done this technique like this on a coated paper, um, after a while my impressions in the versifying on top of those swatch backgrounds, I notice they, they bleed out. It's like this oil based impression just kind of, it tends to keep, it doesn't, I don't notice it at first, but after like a couple weeks, um, because oil um, based media, it doesn't dry as fast. Just like, um, it's like comparing oil paints to acrylic paints. Acrylics dry really fast because they're water based. But the fact that this is so absorbent, I maybe the the um, the hybrids will dry faster on this because of that absorbency factor um, that's going to hopefully come into play. But I don't know. So this is all kind of an experiment to me. And uh, you know, like I've said on other videos, you know, a lot of these videos, they're not really so much instructional. I mean, some of them are. You know, like the university ones, Stampscapes University, or. Uh, technique, um, the technique playlist videos, but a lot of these are just me kind of experimenting around and, you know, hitting record on my, um, my camera here. So, um, I don't know, just kind of playing around. All right. So this doesn't feel too different so far as I do this. It's always kind of feels a little bit chalky to me when I do something like this with, um, uh, these hybrid inks on just a blank piece of cardstock. I've been doing this though on coated um, satin finish cardstock. Okay, satin is kind of something in between matte and glossy cardstock. Okay, it's still coated, but it just doesn't doesn't have that real shiny glossy sheen. Um, too glossy and 
applying these inks uh, just doesn't work too well for me um, because the ink is just, you know, these inks become much more surface oriented when they dry. So if you get too much of a buildup, if you're trying to apply more on top of it, it's almost like you're just wiping it off because it's not penetrating that and drying on that glossy surface very quickly. So we'll see how it goes on here. Or, you know, I should say on glossy or on sand. That, that sand finish, it just, um, um, it dries enough to where I can get a decent buildup, okay? All right, so you can see, uh, I'm getting a pretty good uh, coverage on this, but you can see the texturing of this type of paper, just for the fact that it is not coated, you know, with clay coating like, um, you know, your coated card stocks, okay? So remember, coated doesn't mean glossy, it just means coated. Okay, and there's different types of finishes. You know, matte is the most common one. And glossy is the second one. And then somewhere in between that satin and dull finishes, I found is fairly rare in the, uh, the industry, um, the paper industry. Maybe it's these days, I don't know. Maybe that's always been. Okay, so that was uh, a light blue. Now, if you, you can try this with, um, if you have, you know, different colors of pigment inks as well. Like I said, these ones are a little bit, you know, they're a combination of pigment and dye-based inks mixed together, okay? Now, these duo pads, you know, from um, Moon and the Maker, um, uh, it's so that you can dip, you know, you can, you know, make an impression with a combination of both um, the hybrid and the white pigment ink to get these multi-toned, multi-value impressions of your rubber stamps, okay? I've been using it differently because, you, know, I, I, you know, I do things uh, a little bit differently. All right, that is really dark right there, okay? That's almost too dark right there. That's a big blob of ink, but we'll see what we can do with that. With these, with these hybrids, because of that, well, I don't know. It's, it might be absorbed in there. Now, see, if I'm doing this on that coated paper, I'm able to apply some of those lighter ones right over the top of that, and it does affect it. You know, it, it alters it. We'll see if it can do that on this one, though. You know, just because of that sheer, you know, that, um, amount of absorption of a non-coated paper. I don't think I've ever said coated as much as in this video before. Okay. All right, so what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to get this kind of overall glow working in here. Kind of, you know, this centralized glow. And it hopefully it kind of it'll resemble some sort of um, um, a light source um, within here you know, what it, what it ends up looking like, maybe, you know, we'll see. When I stamp over the top of it, maybe it's like some kind of a, a twilight glow or whatnot. Wow, that is really dark. Okay, so one of the things that I think I'm experiencing is it, it feels like when I apply this onto the paper, I get a much faster application of that ink of that color and value very, very quickly. And again, it's because this paper is just so absorbent. Um, you know, I get a full amount of application just with, you know, like one swipe. It's just on there, okay? Um, when I get a little bit more of a buildup on a coated paper, the ink starts, it starts to build up on the surface a little bit more. So it's kind of wet and malleable. This one right here doesn't feel that way, okay? So I think I'm getting much more of that um, kind of drying by absorption. At least surface drying. You know, it's still this pulp of this paper might be a little bit wet, but look at that texturing in there. Um, it could be okay. I tend not to be into that texture so much um, when I'm doing these types of things. Um, I don't know. It just looks like kind of cheap paper to me. But thing about this video though what I'm trying to go for is you know we're trying to maximize um, the media that we have okay or you know if you're doing something now I don't 
have the technique down right now. I'm just kind of experimenting, so I think I, I can do better with this, you know, the more I kind of experiment and practice on it and whatnot, so I can kind of get the gist of how much ink I need to apply, so on and so forth, and in combinations of media, too. I'm just trying, like, one, you know, medium at a time on these things, but I have a feeling that these um, pieces will be much better with, you know, using multimedia on them. Okay, so this is looking a little bit better. It's um, filling in. I went back to my lightest um, color. It's a bright sky. So, see, if I go over a dark, you know, hue or color with a light blue, if I'm working on kind of a, like a, you know, another paper that's where it's building up a little bit more, I do, oops, I do find that you can kind of re reclaim some of the um, lighter values on there because it's almost like you're removing some of that ink that you've already laid down. If it's built up and it's still malleable and it's wet on the surface, you can kind of wipe through it and remove some of it. I'm not experiencing that here, but I am finding that I am getting a richer intensity and saturation of this color the more that I lay down on here, okay? You know, of this blue. All right, so, you know, it's not looking too bad. It's very textural, though, you know, in comparison to uh, um, the your coated papers, okay? It's not going to be as textural as, like, say, a linen or something like that, or a watercolor paper and whatnot, you know, something that's really, really textured. But, um, I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. I don't find that. That, I mean, that's... I know we could say that it looks more like a kind of like a shimmer or something like that. Like if you look at like at a, you know, the lighting on the bottom of a pool or something like that. This one would be like the lighting on the bottom of a pool by you know the moonlight or something like that because it's dark in there. But um, um, I don't know. Sometimes with that type of thing, I try to kind of smooth it out as well. Let's try to apply some of this pigment ink in, in that center area right here. We have this dark to light glow kind of going in here, right? So we applied a lot of darker tones, you know, right around in the perimeter, and the lighter ones are in here. Well, the lighter ones go through everything, but we've just applied the darker ones more, slightly more perimeter-oriented. We do have a lot of that, you know, that darker ink coming into here, but it might not be the same um, coating and amount of it, basically, as on the perimeter, right? So if you use more of a certain color in a certain area, it's going to, reach, you know, kind of read as um, kind of a more of a pure amount and saturation of that hue. But we want to use some of those lighter tones in here too, right? So you transition whatever color you're working with um, from light to dark, meaning more to less in the middle, if that makes sense. Okay, so let's see. I don't know if I mentioned it, but these are just plain paper towels here that I'm working with, okay? All right, so I've worked, all that being said, um, I've worked from uh, more ink on the perimeter to lighter inks on the inside to get that transition of tones. And plus, the darker inks are a little bit more perimeter-oriented. But we can go in here now with white pigment ink as well, okay, and just introduce that right in the center here, you know, because it's light. So why not use some of this light? Okay, now this is what I'm finding here. This is working just like it does on my coated paper. It smooths out all of that kind of texture, that paper texture. Like I said, I, you know, if I can't do anything about it, then I'm good with it. But I, I do like kind of smoothing it out. So see that? It's a much smoother look to it. I can still see a little of that texture, you know, if I'm looking carefully. But, you know, I tend to like this white pigment ink applied in there. It just, I don't know, it, it, I feel it's more atmospheric with that um, in there too. So it's like you're working from dark to light and then you work from light to dark out here. 
So I use more of the white in the center and then I transition it out to the perimeter just as I worked from the darker perimeter inks. And I transitioned it less, you know, in here. Darker inks, colored inks, more to less, okay? And then with the white, you work more to less as you transition it like that, okay? So you see, I use a lot of it right there. And then as you move out like this, you just kind of transition and, I don't know, kind of feather it out, you know, like that. And then you have that nice glow. I don't know, that's not looking too bad to me um, here. All right, so now here's the thing. <laughs> that's what it tends to look like. I'm just kind of curious to know how this um, impression, I cannot stamp this out in like a dye-based ink. It'd be stamping out a wet, I mean a, a water-based medium over oil, you know what I mean? If you're going to do oils, you do oil over water-based, okay, and that's fine, but you can't go water-based over oil. It's just, you know, it's not going to, that combination's not going to work. So, oil over oil should be fine, right? But we'll see how it kind of lasts over time. I'll put some notes in the bottom section of the, you know, thing, if there's any changes, you know, from when I initially post this video. Uh, or maybe I'll do a follow-up video and I'll show you what these impressions look like. Um, I'm not going to wait a week, you know, to post this video. I'm just going to put it up here, so. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so. I think one of the things, I haven't used these hybrid inks in a while, but I was thinking maybe, sometimes I hold this down a little bit longer, but I was thinking maybe this was the one that I didn't need so much. trying to remember. If, it, if it's dye-based inks and I'm stamping wet into, you know, wet into wet, like a really super wet background, then I have to hold this down a little bit longer, but I think it didn't matter with this so much. Okay. I think that looks pretty good. That white pigment ink, that white pigment ink almost kind of created a, uh, a really smooth surface, didn't it? You can still see where I didn't go with the white up there. You can see that kind of, you know, texturing. And like I said, I'm not anti-texture. Some, I don't know, you know, uh, that's become this thing with some types of um, coloring. It's like we can't see any, you know, textures or streaks or anything like that. Um, I'm not quite sure where texture, you know, suddenly. I don't know. I guess there's good-looking textures and bad. I guess there could be, but um, generally you want texture in um, artwork. You want to, you know, I mean, it's like, hey, you know, you can see all this brushwork, you know, in that Van Gogh painting or something like that, you know what I mean? But that isn't, you know, Rembrandt, you know, is Rembrandt better than, you know, Van Gogh? Van Gogh is probably more, you know, popular. It's because of those, all you know, all that texture and whatnot, so... Um, I don't know. Don't think of textures as a bad thing. You know, whether you're doing something with pens and whatnot and inks, you know. I don't know. I say go for it. You know. Have more texture. You know, or a, like a color pencil, per, you know, uh, individual. Um, what are you going to tell them? Don't, you know, don't have colored pencil or something like that? <laughs> Anyways, I... I don't know, that's one of those like little pet peeves of mine when I see people like, oh my god, you know, that, what kind of, how's that t paper, you know, oh no, that paper's no good because it, you know, when you use it, you know, it leaves texture or, you know, there's marks of the, uh, you know, the pen, you know, the industrial designers and everyone that you did all those comp, you know, super awesome types of um, comprehensives, you know, it was all texture. They use those line works and where they, the overlapping of the lines kind of create a darker one. I mean, that looks so cool. You know, that was like an aesthetic. 
Okay, so I'm just putting down some foreground here in the form of those reeds using the same um, Versafine oil-based black pigment ink there. So far, so good. But like I said, if there is any kind of running of the medium, I won't really know it, you know, probably for a week. Now, I don't know if I, I if it, if it's prone to doing that, all right, I think we might be able to um, kind of stop that maybe with some spray fixative anyway, you know, before it ran, if it's going to, I don't know. I'm looking at this, I don't know if it's going to run or not. My, my, I don't know, my gut feeling is that it is not. Because, I mean, this, you know, see, when I go like this, I mean, this is, you know, a thick versifying ink. If I did this on a coated paper, with that amount of ink, you know, already laid down in the background, the white pigment ink, there's four layers of ink back in there. Well, maybe not in that center section, but definitely around on the perimeter. And I go like that. Now, I can see a little bit from that oak branch because I just stamped it. But this is, you know, this stamped out, what, you know, a couple minutes ago, right? And it's not leaving any kind of print on my finger, all right? So I have a feeling that the absorbency factor and just the, you know, the sheer, you know, absorbency um, characteristic of a non-coated paper, I think it's absorbing enough of that oil or, you know, whatever the binder is used in all of these different... Um, Inks right here is enough to make that surface area dry enough, I guess, and fixed enough to where it maybe won't um, uh, bleed, okay? So, I don't know. All right, let's try out some other things on here, too. Might as well. I kind of like this in terms of a finished piece. I think it'd be cool if I used some um, Dr. Martin's bleed proof white on here and just splatter painted like some kind of early snowfall or something like that. I don't know. Shall we do that? Okay, I was going to say if I cleaned off my toothbrush here, um, I'll do it. If I didn't, then maybe I wouldn't. All right, this is your Dr. Martin's bleed proof white. I haven't used this for a week or so, so I'm going to have to mix this up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. okay, I thought I'd have to add some water to it. Looks like it's okay. This is a um, an opaque white watercolor paint. It's really popular with uh, calligraphers. Oftentimes you don't see it in kind of your paint section of your art store. And you see it over in the calligraphy section because a lot of people do like dip, you know, um, pen brush lettering with um, your Dr. Martin's Bleed Proof White. Art stores have it, calligraphy places. Um, sometimes I've looked for it in other countries um, if someone can't find it. And uh, what I do is I look up um, like calligraphy Australia or something like that. And you know, some of these um, online uh, calligraphy uh, places um, have it. <laughs> Oftentimes it's like out of stock too because they probably don't get too much of it. It's kind of, you know, one bottle really lasts a long time, too, so maybe not if you're, not if you're a calligrapher doing a lot of that, but um, I don't know, one bottle lasts me a really long time. Okay, so um, kind of a thick syrup consistency, or I don't know, maybe it's a thin syrup consistency, roughly about, but um, um, just an old toothbrush, and I'm going to splatter paint this down. And I'm about seven inches from my surface, okay. If I just have it up in the background and I stand my images over it, it would kind of read more as stars, but the fact that I'm splattering it over everything, I'm just saying that it's like a, I don't know, it's like a nighttime or um, maybe just slightly you know, twilight, time of day, maybe, I don't know, whatever. And 
we'll just call this kind of like a light snowfall falling, all right? Maybe the first snowfall of the year, who knows? You know, or just, you know, it's one of those snowfalls that comes down and, it, you know, it melts off in like, in, you know, in an hour or something like that. So you get a lot of that texturing on there. It just kind of makes it more interesting, don't you think? Okay. Look at that ink intensity. It's not too bad, is it? And one of the things about the hybrid inks, I find that dye-based inks and eh, maybe alcohol inks a little bit, more the dye-based inks, when they dry, they often look different. Sometimes they can dry kind of duller looking than what they look like when they were freshly applied. But with the hybrid inks, I find that kind of what you see is what you get. You know, when it dries, it doesn't change too much um, from the wet version. Like I said, it's not super damp or anything like that. But um, I have a feeling that that's, you know, what it's going to look like. So anyway, so, you know, we're talking about kind of a surface-oriented medium. And, you know, that would go for wet media like hybrid inks, like this, but it would certainly apply to your dry media, surface-oriented media, like, um, like I said, colored pencils, pastels, chalks, you know. I was thinking, I don't even know if I have any um, pastels um, anymore. I have to see, I have to check in my, my tool boxes, you know, some of my tool boxes from, like, college, my college years, you know, and I you know, we used all these types of things in classes. I probably have some Conte crayons. And, oh, and charcoal. I don't know. People, Robert Sanders, they don't want to see like charcoal applications, but I think I want. I think I'm going to do it anyway. Um, I do like charcoal drawings and things like that. So, um, Conte crayons. I don't know. Maybe you do have some of those types of things in your, um, you know, your list. You know, your your supplies that you've had over the years or whatnot. Let's, uh, let's see what we can come up with. We might be able to come up with something interesting. I don't think I've done uh, too many, if any, um, charcoal, like, uh, draw, uh, stamping scenes before. I'll have to check. Um, but I don't remember doing it. Okay, so this is a white paint pen. It's just the Meowzen acrylic painter marks on anything acrylic based okay um, you have to shake it up really good before you use it every time um, otherwise it you know it separates it's one of those paint pens that separates and you get the binder and the paint um, ratio all kind of separated and uh, if you start using it sometimes if you don't shake it up it's very very translucent it might be more clear than white um, when you initially get it to, you have to do a little bit more shaking, so. Okay, so I'm putting some of this white on the tops of some of these rocks. And that can represent, uh, you know, a couple different things. It could be this snow falling on top of the rock. Or it could just be lighting, you know. They could be, these rocks could be a little bit top lit. You know, so they look a little bit more dimensional that way. But when you do this right here, um, Hopefully my designs don't look flat, okay? Hopefully they, they look dimensional. You know, you get your toning of your rocks from the base, they're darker, and then transition, transitions up into lighter areas. Some of these rocks are round, some of them are more, I don't know, blocky looking, you know, with the, you know, these sharper angles like that, okay? So I try to have a combination of both um, those types of things within a scene, but, if you reiterate that lighting scheme in here, where it's lighter on the top and darker on the bottom, with, you know, something like this white paint pen, they look even more dimensional that way, because, you know, these rocks did get, you know, they're colored in, you know, basically from all that tone going on in the background like that, so. I don't know, does, does that kind of change, I don't know, the dimensional spirit of these rocks in here. See that little bit in here? And where it gets really dark on the perimeter, I don't have any kind of, you know, the highlighting because it's lighter in here, right? See how this is kind of just generally light right in here? So I make my highlights on the imagery within that field of a lighter area lighter, okay? In the area out here where it's darker, 
we're saying that there's you know not as much lighting hitting those areas so I don't have them top lit okay does that make sense more highlights in the lighter area and less or none in the darker area okay all right so anyway um, let's see if I can do something here oh boy let's try it here I don't know if I can manipulate this too much um, after I do it if I fail but eh, let's just try it here if I fail I'm failing on camera <laughs> and what I'm talking about is, let's see if I can do like a little focal point here I'm gonna try to go for this kind of twinkling kind of a eight-point star okay so I start off with a little dot right here okay and I'm going to try to do uh, you know a little bit of a streak like that okay uh, okay which one was I going with right here I get a little ink going up, and then I do it seriously you, just, you don't go like this and up okay it's just more like a like a check you know like that well, it's like that comet that was just here you know that looks kind of cool like that but we're not doing the comet we're doing a star all right and you come over here and do that downward little and you get a little bit of it and go in here. Sometimes I have to do it a few times. All right, so there's there's the um, the horizontal streaks like that. Now let me do the uh, the vertical. Always do it. Always do the downward stroke. Okay, so I turn the paper in the direction that I need to to do my downward stroke that's the ergonomic angle okay doing like this is not ergonomic but going like that is ergonomic okay all right so there's my four point star right and I'll go for, and then these kind of um, these secondary ones I always make them a little bit shorter Okay. It's kind of funny. The the smallest little element kind of becomes the focal point, doesn't it? You know, we have all these large stamps and you know a lot of different colors of ink and or whatever. But I bet you know the viewer's eye will go straight to that um, star up there. Anyways, kind of makes a for a fun focal point and whatnot. Um, yeah, I need something down here. Okay, I kind of like the way this came out. So let's see. I need. I don't know. Let me, let me put some little canoeist or something down in that area. Let's go with the versifying with the solo canoeist. I just happen to have this one kind of right near my desk. Did I use this recently on another video? I can't remember. I think I used the fisherman or something like that. Okay, so anyways, a couple different focal points. We have a focal point here, a focal point up there, but I don't know. Uh, okay, now if I spray this too, I could spray it with glossy, you know, spray sealant, like a Krylon, and it would make it, I don't think it would make it real glossy, but I think it would make it more satiny, or I can just hit it with a, um, you know, like a matte finish. And I think that would look pretty good too. But this doesn't look too bad to me. So, and I mean, I knew that I thought this would look better than, you know, kind of my absorbent styles of media like um, alcohol inks and uh, whatnot. Because if you have more media that's kind of sitting on the surface, you know, you can showcase the um, the potential of that media in its kind of pure form more than if it's soaking into, you know, the pulp of the paper. So. Um, yeah, I think that looks okay there, and I'm pretty happy with this one, so, um, like I said, you know, it's not glossy, but, you know, the sheer amount of ink on here, it's kind of giving it a little bit of a sheen, though, right? So, I think, it, you know, like I said, what I'm talking about, you know, with the, with the sealants and the sprays, I think we can bump this up kind of a little bit more in terms of the saturation, and when the saturation becomes a little bit more, um, I don't know, profound or whatever, I think the little white dots will stand out a little bit more. So if you make something a little bit more kind of intense and darker, 
then your lighter elements within the piece stand out more by contrast, okay? So anyways, okay, so there we go with your, you know, just flat, plain, kind of boring paper to start off with. And I think that looks pretty good, you know? I don't know. I was going to do something with these colors, too, and give, you know, go for like a twilight, you know, kind of greenish colored scheme, but... Yeah, I think, you know, this one right here made enough of a statement for me. Maybe we'll try something with some sunset tones and whatnot, but, um... Okay, so here's my general thoughts on this. Um, and this goes, kind of goes for coated papers, too, you know, with these, um... Uh, pigment hybrid styles of inks on here. Sometimes I'm not into the texturing so much, so I really like how, you know, the white pigment inks can kind of go in and smooth out some of those areas, okay? So, utilizing this black pigment ink over the tops of the other inks that have already been applied are, you know, my hope is that um, they won't, these impressions here won't bleed. But, you know, I think it's a moot point if I spray this. I think if I spray it, It'll expedite the drying process where we don't have this kind of oil-based impression kind of on a microscopic level, you know, over time spreading out, you know, from its um, buildup, okay, you know, on a microscopic level we have this, you know, little buildup of ink laying down on something so it's going to want to kind of spread out if it doesn't dry quickly, but... I have a feeling that this paper here is going to be absorbing some of that oil out of the out of the, out of the media, so that just the pigment ink is remaining on top, and that will dry kind of in more in a more expeditious fashion than having you know more buildup using a coated paper. I'd still rather use a coated paper than this, but you know. This, is, this whole point of this is just to, you know, see what we can do on this paper right here because, you know, stuff like this type of paper is more readily available everywhere in the world than your coded papers, um, you know, that are, that are more geared towards the printing industry, so. Okay, so I'm rambling on and on, uh, but I am pretty excited about kind of the results of this one. And I got, um, I don't know, something, I think I, I, think I got, I think it looks right now, a little bit better than I thought it would look. I thought it would, I didn't think it would get that intense right down there in terms of that blue. So, um, going from the light blue to the medium blue to the darker blue, and then going back in with the lighter blue right over the top of it, I think that was the thing that's giving it that little bit more of a, kind of a stronger glow than just working from light to dark, you know. Sometimes you go back to your lighter ones right on the top or like that when it comes to surface-oriented media, like pigment ink, or in this case, the hybrid ink. Okay, so anyways, if you have any questions, drop me a note in the comment section. If you've used um, some different types of media on some very plain paper, I don't know, maybe put in the comment section about, you know, what your favorite media to use might be, or especially combination of media that you use on there to get the results that you're kind of going after and the results that you're happy with. So I can always learn a lot from a lot of you. Um, there's a lot more of you out there than there is of me kind of fumbling around and kind of experimenting with these things, and, you know, for the first time. So anyways, thanks for watching, and thanks as always for tuning into the channel.